Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Autumn Impressions. I'm Pete Boulay, and this is the Southwest Washington Wind Symphony. Did you enjoy the wonderful paintings in the lobby today? Yeah. Well, if you, if you didn't arrive in time to take a look at them, they'll be there after the concert as well for you to enjoy. The paintings were very generously donated by Grace Teigen and Jean Wigglesworth, known around town as Grace and Jean. They are very involved in the Vancouver art community, and they have a Give Art Foundation which donates art to worthy organizations. And the Southwest Washington Wind Symphony was cho chosen as a recipient, and we're in good company because the Portland Art Museum and WSU were other recipients. Because we were gifted these wonderful paintings, we decided to make our season about art and music. If you saw the article in the Columbian yesterday, you probably already know that the painting in the lobby, entitled September Hut by Sheep Jones, just a little 12 by 12 painting. That painting was the inspiration for all of the musical selections in today's concert. Isn't it fun that a little painting inspired an entire concert of music? I think that's a really fun idea. Now, I realize that some of you may fall in love with a painting today. There's art lovers out there. So here's how the art auction is going to work today. You'll need to sign in with a lobby usher there's a reserve bid on each painting, and once the painting reaches its reserve bid, it will go home to the highest bidder. For the paintings that don't reach their reserve today, they will be back for the next one or two concerts of the season. Then in the final concert of the season, we'll take the re reserve bid off, so the highest bidder will get the painting on the last concert of the season. Since the paintings were donated, 100% of the revenue goes to our organization, so we're, we're really happy about that. The lobby ushers will be happy to answer any of the questions you may have, and we can't accept cash, check, or credit card. Hopefully, you'll get caught up in the fun of art and music, and you'll attend all three of our concerts this season. You can come to enjoy the paintings, watch to see if your bid is holding, or simply listen to some great band music. That's a good deal, isn't it? Before we start today's performance, don't forget to silence your phones, band two, and please enter and exit only between the musical numbers. And the ushers have asked me to say, no sneak out bidding on the art between the musical numbers. You'll have 20 minutes after the program to enjoy the paintings and bid if you'd like. Now I'd like to introduce our conductor, who did the wonderful job of connecting today's music with the painting. How about a warm welcome for Dr. Patrick Murphy. Thank you all for coming this afternoon, uh, coming in from what's actually a beautiful fall day here in the Northwest. Um, so we're going to start today. You've all seen the, uh, the painting that's on the front of your program, September Hut, which is kind of the inspiration for all of this. When I went over to Pete's house and saw all of these paintings that you see in the lobby lined up in his living room, I was drawn to a few of them right away, and to be honest, this was not one of them. Right? Some of them are really simple to look at, right? You can see the two kids, and you can make immediate connections to them. And this one just sort of confused me for a while. So I took, uh, I noticed when I got home, a lot of pictures from a lot of different angles of this relatively small painting, trying to figure out what was going on, what the complexities were in this piece. Uh, and so today's program is pretty diverse. It's got some classic elements to it. It's got some very modern elements to it. Because I found as I looked at it, I kind of looked at it differently every single time. And I think that's true of a lot of, especially modern art, where we kind of interpret it differently depending on our mood depending on what time of day it is, our tiredness level. <laughs> Goodness knows our tiredness level, right? And so um, I think that today's program reflects a lot of that. So the first piece by Joseph Turin is the overture to a chamber opera he wrote just about 10 years ago called The Scarecrow, based on writings by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Uh, so you can certainly look up that story if you like. 
But again, obviously inspired by the bottom right side of this where we have the corn stalks, imagining that it's a larger field, perhaps a scarecrow is inside of that, um, especially on an autumn day like today. Um, the music is not overly modern sounding. It actually has a, just pretty traditional harmonies. So hope you enjoy this. This is the overture to the scarecrow.
we have people moving around between pieces today, changing the sections they're in, so you get to hear me talk between each one today. Bonus time for you. So our second piece comes from Julie Giroux. Um, it's called Under the Willow, and this is based upon, um, if you know her music at all, perhaps you know that she actually won an Emmy Award for music from the Blue and the Gray, if you remember that miniseries, was it, I think the 80s? The Blue and the Gray, very famous Civil War miniseries that she actually composed much of the music to. And so she has a fascination growing up in the South with the Civil War. And this particular piece harkens to that idea, um, especially for her of the unmarked graves that were left behind after the Civil War. People who were just dumped into graves, not knowing exactly who they were, even which side they were from in these vast fields. So you're thinking, okay, that's a little morbid. But, so my thought with this painting is that it looks like it's this one shack, and I kind of imagine it being like the only thing left behind on this vast battlefield, perhaps. The land has been completely ruined and destroyed, and yet in the middle of it, maybe there's this one shack standing, and then off to the side, under the willow that we can't see, are the Confederate and Union graves. So, I think that the piece is a beautiful piece. It features our horn section over there, so we'll listen for them. Um, but this is Under the Willow by Julie Giroux.
the theme for the concert could be, and now for something completely different, that's how much the program will be today. So the next piece looks at this little shed, or at the September hut, in a whole different way. Now it looks at it perhaps as a one-room schoolhouse in the middle of a plane somewhere. And so this is taking uh, William Grant Still's lovely, charming five movement, five short movement suite called The Little Red Schoolhouse. Uh, if you don't know William Grant Still's music, you're not alone. He's a really, I would say, absolutely underappreciated composer, really one of America's very first and finest African-American composers. And I really like his music because, I'm not saying your children, but he made his music accessible, especially to children. He really wanted the next generation to enjoy classical music. And so the five movements that you're going to hear today um, basically are talking about the different um, imagination personalities that school children might come up with after reading a book. So we have some kind of aggressive ones. We have you know, a kid who's pretending to be a sea captain or something. We have a, a lovely one where somebody is uh, being an Egyptian princess. There's one where the kid is obviously just joking around, just joking around, as we all know kids do in class. So it's really taking these personalities from inside the schoolhouse and describing them through music. So enjoy William Grant Still's Little Red Schoolhouse.
the next piece has one of the most cumbersome titles I've ever read for a piece of music. The Archangel Raphael who leaves a house of Tobias. That, that's a mouthful right there. What happened to just prelude or you know, something like that. So it's a long title and frankly when I decided I was going to use this painting, um, this is a piece I just said, you know, I just love this piece and the word house is in the title of the piece and there's a, a, a structure of some sort in the painting. I love the piece so much, I'm going to use it, and we're going to call it good. So by all means, go to the Old Testament, look up the story of um, the Archangel Raphael. But if I'm just being completely honest with you, I picked it because I love the piece. So enjoy. This is the Archangel Raphael who leaves a house of Tobias.
So am I right? Nice piece, right? Yeah. So I teach at the University of Portland, and one of the classes that all of us teach if we're in the performing and fine arts is an, a survey class called Introduction to the Fine Arts. Every student at our university takes the class, so every semester between four and 500 students are taking this class. And we each have sections of 35. We take them to the art museum, we take them to the organ symphony, maybe to the ballet, maybe to um, a theater production. We take them to three events. And one of the things when we go to the art museum, I tell my students, is especially to go into the modern section and look at the paintings, but don't look at the cards right next to it right away. You know, there's always the card right next to it that tells you what the title is. Now sometimes it's untitled number eight, and that doesn't do you any good whatsoever. But other times, the artist has a specific title on there. But I tell them, look at it first, form your own opinion, figure out what it says to you, if anything, and then look at the title and see if that affects the way you perceive the painting in any way. And they do that, and they come up with all kinds of things of, of what they actually see that the artist didn't intend. And sometimes they saw exactly what the artist intended. Doesn't work so well with classic paintings, because those are pretty obvious. But when they go into the more modern section, it really kind of energizes them to be there and kind of to take ownership of the art, which is very much what we're doing today. Hopefully, one or two of these pieces, when you see the pieces of art, speaks to you and, say, and says, yeah, I can see where that's coming from. And in other ones, maybe you're saying, yeah, that Murphy guy, he has no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> but I'm giving you a variety because my mind works in mysterious ways. So the next piece is Night on Fire, and this is uh, by John Mackey. He's a modern composer. And you'll know right away that it's modern, because it starts off with saxophones, and it says that they're allowed to be brutal at the beginning. And for those of you who love saxophones, you know what that means. It means they're going to go for it, which is great. So this is a very modern uh, um, piece, but this really speaks, I think, to the red sky in this painting. You know, Night on fire, it looks like this literally is catching on fire, perhaps, in the background. So we're going to tune, because we have a soprano sax that's going to join the fray, and off we go with Night on Fire.
about another hand for those percussionists back there, huh? <laughs> percussionists never get enough love. We always accuse them of burning things in the back of the room during rehearsals when they're bored, and it's sometimes true, but not always. All right, our final two pieces, um, I won't speak in between these two, but uh, Pete Boulay will come back up. First, we have Autumn Air by Nicole Puno. Um, this is a relatively new piece. I think it was just premiered within the last year or so. Um, but it's a really, really, um, I think it's a really heartfelt piece from her that really does speak to the season, speak to things that are ending, but also uh, beginnings. Uh, so you're gonna hear some chimes and some bells in this, you know, pick up pace in some places, because you know, for some people this is a, a really um, solemn time of year. Other people, they really, really get into this season. So whichever one fits for you, I think that's great for autumn air. And then our final piece is called Shortcut Home by Dana Wilson. This is me looking at, the, at this shack as maybe uninhabited, but it's a desperate for more people to come to it. So maybe this is a family, maybe it's somebody coming back from war, maybe it's whatever the situation is, somebody rushing to get home to make this place that was once beautiful and grand, beautiful and grand yet again. So again, thank you very much for coming this afternoon. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've heard some things that you think fit the art, and I hope you will bid on some of the art in the lobby afterwards. So this is Autumn Air by Nicole Puno.
We would not be here today in our 14th season if not for your generous continued support. These concerts are community efforts. We count on you, our audience, our musicians, and our volunteers. Collectively, our volunteers donate over 1,000 hours per program, and we count on your contributions to pay for our building rental, music purchases, insurance, program printing, and publicity. If you enjoyed yourself today, please make a donation so we can continue with our mission of providing free band concerts for our community. The ushers will be happy to accept your donations at the conclusion of the concert. And if you would like to make a donation using a credit card, we can do that now. I have some quick thank yous. The, I would like to thank the Southwest Washington Wind Symphony Board of Directors, Richard Carr and Colleen Chun, our ushers, Beacock Music, Music World, Wager Audio. I know it's a long list, but there's a lot of community effort in this. Evergreen Public Schools and Video Services and Student Crew, Thomas Friedman, Jan Boulay, yes, that's my wife, the Poznanski Foundation, Grace and Jean, and the Give Art Foundation, and especially our dedicated musicians who volunteer all of their time, and our director, Dr. Patrick Murphy. Yeah, that's enough. I don't want them getting big heads. So. <laughs> they are amazing, though, and I'm honored to play in this band. Please uh, check out our website and social media sites for additional information. Our next concert is March 3rd. Get that on your calendar. March 3rd. It's a Sunday, 2019. Thank you so much for coming today. And I know Patrick has done such a great job connecting the music with the art, so here's my attempt. Whenever there's a home, there's always a shortcut to get you home sooner. Here is Dana Wilson's Shortcut Home. Thank you.